obviously what I had done in the room that day, and we'll get back to this in, in a moment, was an evocation to self. <laughs> I called myself to come and intervene for self because self was just being stupid. And translinear and multidimensional and quantum self moved in with the kind of equipment that was necessary to wake up this kind of hard head, rock head. <laughs> you mean like, I knew everything already. <laughs> so at that point about the physical world, it was very difficult to, to come at me with some kind of new idea or something that I didn't know about. And also I had a spiritual past, so I had a lot of information about spiritual. So spiritually and mentally, I was very equipped, physically even strong, but just nowhere near in the proper shape. Literally need to shape it up a little bit. So once I went into the high vibration and evocation of self. Now, how it came to me was as I was sitting on the bed and the deja vu started happening. Once it stopped, it seemed logical because of what I had just experienced. I was like, I said to myself years ago. When I was sitting in prison for that year and a half, learning all that knowledge, reading all those encyclopedias and getting myself together using that time as a college period, <laughs> like what time you were spending in college, I said to myself then, you know, after I had found the word, I said, man, you know, now I'm just going to put it away. See, when I was studying there, I kept reading in the, in the Apocryphas or, you know, in, in, in Sibylline Oracles or somewhere in each works. They're always like, and he was given the name. And then, and then they'll say it another word. And the name was terrible. And then the name was lost. And none had the name. And I'm like, damn, this is like a suspense story. They're like, what's the name? And I'm just looking all over the place and couldn't find the name until I kept going back further and further and further and further and further and further. And then one day I got to a book and it had the name. And by then I had read so much crazy stuff about the name. And the last thing I was going to do was call the name. <laughs> I just I just put the name somewhere where I always would have it. And I marked it down as an achievement. You found the great ineffable word. But because it's ineffable, then you probably shouldn't say it because of all this stuff. That is a huge list, laundry list of things that's going to happen to you. I was like, OK, OK, I'm definitely cool on that. And I even went back to sleep. <laughs> like years later, like a few years later, one year later, I'd gone back into the world, as they say. But then this point woke me up. And when that happened, it was so crazy. I felt like I needed to defend myself. <laughs> Basically, like I need this is too much for me. I need to call the word. And it seemed like a logical thing for me. That's how it all happened. It wasn't that I knew anything about what it was going to do. Had any idea of mantras, vibrations, tones, frequencies. I didn't have any idea of that kind of stuff. I just knew innately, I'm going to call the word because this is like, I need to talk to God because whatever is going on right now, God's going to know. And if this is God, and if God is terrible, and he's a destructor and all this kind of stuff, then so be it. That's what I need right now because I am not, after getting this revelations, going to be going into the lower exp experience. I'm, God's going to know about this. <laughs> so, I uttered the word three times. That's why I was saying, if you're not it, nothing happens because I'm sure many people, there's people in Jerusalem, they have to say this word quite a few times during the day. Sometimes, you know, most of the time they're told never to say it, but people say it, nothing happens generally. So it's not just anyone, it's when you're ready. And it's not just the word, it's you. You are the word. See how they had to play me. That's why how I had to play myself. OK, let's watch this. See, if you if you're told every single thing about what you're going to do, let's say 10 years ago, I was told every single thing about what I was going to do. The whole thing. Would I really do it? <laughs> all of this work and oh, the, oh, my goodness. No way. So how much do you think your higher self, your parents, your ancestors are really keeping from you until you show yourself ready to actually be approved for that? <laughs> you see, it's quite a bit probably, right? So that's what happened to me. And in that experience, I got to a point of realizing that, and let me just collect myself here. So I, you know, going through this experience, I got to a stage where, oh, so that's what I, that's what I meant to say. I just want to make sure I skip nothing here. So when I said the word three times, right? And I had known this because, see, now, let, let's just be very clear here. Now, 
in Christianity, you know, which is, you know, like the, the, the last of the traditions, <laughs> you know, the one that had the least, uh, the least amount of minerals in it, <laughs> right? It's just almost water, nowhere near the rocks that we used to eat, <laughs> right? Nowhere near Mufkuts. It's like the, the weakest of the weak, right? But in this tradition, they talk about these. Okay, so this is, this is what I, re- I want to say. I'm just trying to collect my thoughts here. Okay, so they don't talk about really directly in the Bible anything about evocations. Okay, this is what I'm trying to get to here. But in the Hindu traditions, evocations happen all the time. They're called mantra. Okay, so there's n- virtually no awareness of what mantra is in Christianity. Okay, however, mantra exists in Christianity. In the general mantra that most people use in Christianity is hallelujah. Okay, hallelujah. That is a mantra, right? And you know it's a mantra because if you go to the the holiness or the the Pentecost or basically the all out crunk denomination, they can get the spirit moving with this word. And also they have a process called tearing for the Holy Ghost. That if you say this word over and 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 over again, maybe for three hours, something happens. And it really does happen. As a little kid, I was always trying to think, are they faking? Or is this real? And it was always a mixture of both. It was always a mixture of both. Some folks you could clearly tell that they wasn't faking. Sister Betty was not faking when her shirt come up. She was just too holy for that. And then others you could tell, okay, that's Shandala. Shandala, is that you? Because that's what everybody is saying, Shandala. But a bobo ito bobo, now he's on it. <laughs> so this is what I was as a little kid, okay? So because of that, I already knew the formula, if you may, from how I could process it, that if you say words over and over again, that something happens. So this is kind of where the suggestion came from. It was like, oh, Eureka, maybe that, that ineffable tetragramma thing you found you just say it over and over again, like the hallelujah thing, and the same thing will happen because I went through the process of tearing for the Holy Ghost, and I did receive Shekinah, and it still talks at three in the morning about all types of wisdom. <laughs> like, it just, it's just a wisdom thing. It's like Siri, but from like 4,000 years ago. And anything you have focusing on that has to do with balance and, 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 and spirituality, nature, etc., it just comes in and it will tell you about all of that. So I inherited that. So I was thinking that this was going to be like a similar bolt on. Okay. No, it would almost be like maybe hallelujah is like the female one. Like what Solomon describes her as like a beautiful bride, gentle, gentle dove descending, probably that kind of character. Tetragrammaton is more like the burning bush. It's more like what happens in the holiest of holies. Now this is us, (laughs) but it's like a flaming fire. So, but of course, I wasn't like in prepared for that at all because this is Kundalini. Okay, remember all these symbols, they're all the same. They're Sriantric fields without the straight lines. This is Kundalini ready to have its way with me. And I'm just like a deer in the headlights. Hey, <laughs> so it went. Once I said it three times, I felt my body vibrating because I knew uh, from the tearing process years ago that if you did it on your knees, there's water in your knees and it seemed to cause a vibration easier. So I was like, okay, let me get up. Let me try that. I said the word three times and the stuff started vibrating. I was like, oh, shit, this works. Let me clean everything up because I already knew, you know, again, I, since I was a kid, you know, you know, nothing filth, you know, get everything clean, you know, clean, your, take your shoes off. You know, so I was like, you know, okay, we're going to meet God right now. I don't know what this thing does, but it's working. And also I had a friend there in the house with me. Now he was in the house downstairs and I had already had the five minutes and then the process of coming to the realization that I need to call this name within the span of three or four hours. And he knew nothing about that. So he thought he was coming upstairs to just his homeboy and who he came up to was Yah after that, just a flaming fire, okay? So he comes in, he's like, yo, what's up? So I give him the rundown. Yo, this said this, this said this, this said this and this and this and this. The same conversation that anybody would have had with me like a, uh, when I started on year one. <laughs> and, you know, my wife used to say always, hey, you know, <laughs> I'm so glad we changed a lot about because, man, I would go at you and it didn't matter what you believed or what you thought or any of that. You just were going to accept this truth because it had hit me that hard. Right. So I hit him. He was the first one to get it. <laughs> Pure lion breath all over him. <laughs> 
And so because he was like a really close friend, he was like, cool, man, whatever. <laughs> you know, I've been through kind of something like that before. So he was along for the ride. So after I said, so you're going to leave? And he's like, no, I'm going to sit here. And I'm like, shit, you're going to sit All right. He ain't going to stop me then. I'm not going to be ashamed. And so I started calling it. And maybe once I got to maybe the seventh word or seventh time, that's when I started realizing as the energy was coming up that I couldn't stop it because I started feeling a reverberation in the body. And this is Kundalini awakening. And then it felt like water was rising. I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> and like water was really rising up my body. And I'm like, man, what's going on? And then he's like, and then everything is shaking that is metal. And things that are not metal, and I've mentioned this several times, or low, no resonance, are not moving. And this is creating like a warping effect. Like it literally looks like the reality is kind of warping a little in the room. So Buddy is like, yo, what's, up? what's going on? And he grabs me. And that was right around the time that I was leaving. Because not only was I up to my neck in water all of a sudden, <laughs> what felt like water, the vibration was so high, I was like almost kind of paralyzed by the vibration. And then I felt like it, because I was basically thinking in my mind, man, when this gets to my nose, I'm going to drown. <laughs> That's all I kept thinking. is like, I'm going to drown because this water is, which is no water, but I feel water. And then all of a sudden, I lost consciousness. Mm -hmm. And just as fast as I lost consciousness, I gained consciousness again. So it was like a boom boom and the most important point to remember about this that will help us a little bit later in this conversation is that when i went up it seems like i was boom gone and flying up but i didn't see that visually i just felt the inertia and then i hit something boom and with the same amount of strength that i was coming up when i hit that it was like i hit like a trampoline it pushed me back down, but I had gone up so high, I entered into some other spaces. So when I came down, boom, I could feel it in my hands. That's the only thing that was like the indicator that I, I had definitely gone somewhere was like all of the, the knowledge or the essence of these places was actually in my hands. And I was going like this, like, even though I wasn't seeing anything now, once I'm, you know, I'm coming to, I'm like, basically trying to figure out, you know, this is a hell of a ride. I did not expect this. I expected gentle, peaceful duff. <laughs> what I got was, I don't know, Leo Fentalis. I don't know what I got. It was wild. So anyway, I realized that, okay, some, what, about, what about Demetrius? And I looked, and he was strange. And this may give us a little hint of what may happen here in a year or may not, depending upon how well we can actualize our sovereignty 2020 over the entire world to get people expanding into realizing shift happens. <laughs> he clearly wasn't himself. And the behavior I recognized from the movement was sub sub behavior okay now when i say that i recognize it was also because i had a wild amount of awareness every single thing that i looked at i knew the answer to so when i looked at him and i saw him in that condition it, it's almost faster than you can even ask your question what's going on wrong with him you already have an answer his spirit is gone out of his body and what was inhabiting him is like what bodies really are when there's no spirit so i guess it's just one the other half Right. So I was dealing with the other half and he was kind of moving around. And I'm like, oh, shit, I'm going to kill this thing. And that's literally what I saw. I grabbed this barbell and this was what was going on. I'm telling you, this stuff is very powerful and potent. This is why they're warning people. Right. So I grabbed this barbell because I felt like I was in the room with Satan all of a sudden and this is what they call this these kind of roles play out this could be megalomania this could be catharsism this could be uh, a dissociative disorder because you've now taken yourself completely out of the norm and you're trying to operate a heavy vehicle <laughs> so i had the thing and he was there and i had the thing like this now this is about because you know i was i had to be curling i was bigger than i had to be curling maybe 80 pounds so i got this thing like this like a javelin and I saw it. It was like a flicker. 
And what I saw was a gold chain that one of my friends used to wear. And it was the Archangel Michael standing over the devil with the sword. Right. And it was like a freeze frame because it was and in what was said right then and communicated by the higher self is, see, you're going to do it again. You keep doing the same thing over and over again. Now, I had no idea what that meant. And as I keep, I kept like, you know, struggling against, do I eliminate this creature or am I being told something? It started to unfold what that meant. And it was about that this lock that we're in, like what do they say, uh, uh, Mike Ailes, uh, uh sword inter, uh, intercepts the buckler of Satan, you know, all that, right? This was that same traumatic thing going on over lifetimes, be either being the hash hashin, taking uh, uh, some advice from Ben Saba and going to murk a couple crusaders or whether I'm, 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 I'm there, you know, at wherever you're at. But that same good versus evil and how that's not a mysterious way. And how the only way you will extend beyond all of this now that you've come into this level of awareness is if you move in mysterious ways. And right then, of course, I was like, oh, for sure, because now that I'm coming to it, I think I'd probably go to jail for this, too. <laughs> and start thinking now, you're coming down into it now. It's like, yeah, this will begin. And right around that time, he started. He came back and he was like, yo, 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 it's me, it's me, it's dope. And no, he didn't know I had already got the message. <laughs> but. When he came back, he still wasn't exactly himself. And I'm explaining all this for a reason. Like this probably would be one of the only times somebody accounts these kind of experiences deep by detail. But he was trying to basically get back into himself, but kind of into himself. And right then, this other part that he was, it tried, kept trying to find the phone. It was like it was blind, but it was looking for the cell phone. The whole time I started realizing that the whole reason why it kept moving around the room was it was looking for the cell phone and it had he had found it or it had found it and he was grabbing the cell phone and he and once he had got it right there and then something came on my head and it said do not let him use the cell phone. He and it explained in detail right around the, like in real time is me grabbing the cell phone from him as he's making the call and me cracking the phone in half with the superhuman strength. Kundalini is fully active and the explanation came through. It says he's trying to call you so you can hear your own voice from your answering machine. And if that happens, this process, it won't take and it will be dangerous. So it communicated all that at one time, maybe for somebody else in the future or the past that may experience this. Listening to your own voice before the transition, your previous voice, because see, your previous voice contains the exact frequency of where you were then. And if you've changed and now you're going through that process of like settling into the change, your old voice will pull you back the same way people that still think they're seeing the same old person will pull you back. Before the change completely takes, it's like you're just now getting into your new diet and everything. And then here comes those same old people. And now they're pulling you back when the bread starts calling again, when the cheese. Hey. Right. When that when it starts calling, that wheat starts calling, when that crust, that crunch, that skin, when it starts calling, then they're right there harmonizing with that call. And in your process hasn't taken took yet. So you could you could see why higher self ordered me out of Atlanta after I did one major thing. And I only want this all to be on the same recording, just in case some novices, some neophytes are coming in 10 light years in the future and listening and want to observe. The final process that this put me through was, first of all, like you need to walk like everything was walking for me at that point. And I had an exotic rental car business. So I imagine what it was like for people in the A to see me walking. I still have my Ferragamos, though, as I always say, they just made good walking shoes. But they would be rolling up on me like, yo, what's up? Where's the cars? And I'd be like, there's no more of that. You know, the language, language and this and this and this. I go crazy on them. And then what would happen, though, is because we had a list. Like it literally sat me down and it wrote a list and this list was in chronological order to the people that I had met in Atlanta from the first time I stepped into that space that somehow were influencing why I, why I was still there and couldn't even leave. 
Right now, if you told me to even tell you what was going on last Monday based on what I yesterday based on what my life in the A was like once that thing was in rare form, I would not be able to tell you. So to be able to write down every single person that I wrote in order that I met in order was divine for sure. And on top of that, I was bumping into these people randomly by just walking. So I'm walking. And I always tell the story about one in particular. So I just finish up with one. I mean, I'm actually riding down the street. One of the guys next on the list, he's right there. Boom. Yo, seven. What's up? He just is getting out of jail. And I'm like, he's like, yo, man, I'm looking for you, man. I got this. Now we man, and I got this new thing. And, uh, and then I'm like, <laughs> my, but my consciousness is like, you see, you see what they know you for. You see what they know you as you have to change that. So I would go in on them and this and the words and none of that stuff and all this. And by the time they were done, for sure, they'd be like, yo, where I drop you off at, cuh? You know, I'm done. And I'd be like, yo, drop me off at the cemetery, homie. For real. Like I left my, my, the last time one of my best friends saw me, I told him to drop me off at a cemetery. He was so anti what I was talking about. I said, man, drop me off at the Jewish side of the cemetery, man. It's a little bit more peaceful over there than what you got going on. And it was. So the reality is, though, is that. There was a literally a literal changing of the solid eidolonic projection that I had created in, in, in pinnacle people's lives, even to a point where I was coming out of the store. I had just got some water and I'm looking down at my list and I see his Ahmed next. And then I go and open the door. Boom. I run right into somebody. I'm like, I'm sorry. And I look and it's Ahmed. <laughs> and I'm like, but, but I had already seen so much by then. None of this was a surprise. So I just go right into it. He, you know, say, hey, my father's in town. Went to meet his father. His father met me. And then he was like, Cause everything for me was juxtaposed. Then I had turned the world back right side up. So he stuck out his right, his, his right hand and handshake me. And I stuck out my left hand. And I said, I don't use that. I don't use that hand. So basically anything anybody was doing on the normal, you wasn't going to get it from me. And that was how, well, like I said, I destroyed my old life. Because after I spun out of that ring, the last person I saw was my mother. I sent her on her way back to San Diego or California, packed up everything. It was even crazy then. We had like a bag of pictures that had me and Winnie the Pooh. Winnie the Pooh, who the hell is this? Like I'm looking at the pictures and I'm like, man, this is crazy. I'm like, and the last picture I got, I only had like five pictures anyway. But then the other family members, like they in there with Winnie the Pooh. And then the mind was like, the consciousness was like, this is what you need to go at. You need to get rid of this. And I'm thinking like, come on, man, we can't get rid of the family pictures. These are the last of the last. So I wasn't going to do it. No. Nah. My brother came home. He had just come home from school. He saw that we were all cleaning out the storage and he thought that that was all that stuff in the area was garbage. Somebody had set the pictures on top of something. He threw it all down the incinerator. So it was gone. They still looking at me crazy about them family pictures. But anyway, so the reality is, is that this was the part of the ascent. Because the process was an evocation of self. I called higher self to come in and intervene on my behalf because I was in a loop. The vibrational shift. Clearly, there was a vibrational shift, then a fallout. I fell out with everybody. We were always on a different frequency after that. I had to get out of there. It only took me a month to shut down every single thing I had. And I thought that it would take a lot longer to close down my empire. A month. Anything that was harmful for people, I threw it away. Everything else I sold at 25% of the value or gave away. Just to keep, uh-uh. Oh, y'all, y'all went, oh, no, you can't leave. Oh, no, y'all can have that. Okay, you can go. <laughs> oh, you still, and it didn't, well, you can have the whole thing. Okay, you can go. Shit, what's wrong with him? He giving us the... Yeah, I'll sign it. You really you gonna sign it? Yeah, I'll sign it here. You can have it. So I bought my own freedom. Instead of waiting for the cycle for me to get broke again so I can be the higher self. What are you going to do to me? I promise. Instead of going through that whole cycle, I decided to reverse the trend. Instead of losing everything, I gave it all away. And that was the beginning. That was the gesture. I turned the torsion field instead of going like this out, 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 out. 
Some people are confused sometimes about Wittershins and Diesel, like meaning the frequencies and how the vibration of the body is to spin. And I know it could be confusing, but just think of it like this. When it's going like this, it's going out, 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 out. Everything that you have is going out. Everything you think about is out. All the people around you, you're worshiping and all the gods are external and everything is out. But the reversal of the field goes like this. Now everything is in. It's all got to come to me now. I'm not going to chase it anymore. And this is what I did to the torsion field. Simple. By re reversing everything that I was doing before. It's a formula. And it always works. So I come gliding out of there. And that brought me in front of you today. I was in a country that I couldn't speak any of other language and my brain would not take the code. Even to this day, I do not know Spanish. <laughs> and my brain rejects the code. It does not want any more codes. So this meant that I couldn't communicate. I couldn't go out, party, you know, find women, any of that kind of stuff. Not that I would want to <laughs> after the experience. I just was sitting in a small room, <laughs> like looking around, you know, and my best friend was in iguana that, that was from, from magic city 112 ferraris uh, uh all of the stuff going on the, the circuit we used to call it from vegas all the way down to miami with the the uh the all of the different stuff you know what i'm talking about it's like the festival this and then the super bowl this and then puffy is here and then all this and then because i got the cars this is all fueling all in the fuel you see what i mean so but destruction or salvation because in that process I got a chance to see everything I saw Prince Patti LaBelle all these different people to further realize that we were doomed if what I thought which was that these people had some kind of grip on the reality a little bit more than I did was true so through that process I realized man these people don't know any more than I do about in fact I know more than they do about spirituality oh no this is not a solution so I kind of mean now just getting to the top doesn't unlock knowledge for you. In fact, it takes you away from it. Contrary to what most people think, they trying to sign up for the Illuminati now. What a pity. Well, here we are. So notice the process, the shift and the fallout. So I fall out like I just basically left the island and I was on my little boat in the middle of the ocean. I didn't know where I was going to go. I didn't have any friends. I didn't know who I was going to any of that. And nor did I need any of that. All I needed was myself in the process that I was going through with myself. One of the first people I met was a doctor about the body named Thale, who's no longer with us. And he taught me everything about the body. I talked to him one time through a friend's recommendation who I had also wiped out in my conversation. I was like, oh, blah, 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 some lady I met here in Costa Rica. And I just gave it to her. And she was nowhere near ready for that knowledge. But she knew somebody that was. She was like, I'm going to put you to one of my friends, Thale. He gets into all of that. That's what she said. And on Christmas Day, you know, three years later, or two, excuse me, a year later, Christmas Day, around that same time, 21st, 25th, 26th, same thing, he calls me. Hey, what's up? You know, I heard, you know, we need to talk. And I said, yeah, are we going to go through protocols or are we just going to go right into this? He said, come by. And so I hit him with it when I went over there. <laughs> like anybody could get it. You guys know me. Like in the beginning, still now, anybody can get it. So I was on my motor, like, mm. it was Christmas. I was riding through the city like it was vanilla sky. There was nobody in the city. And I went over there to his house and I started giving to him. He said, man, this is brilliant, but you're filthy. What? what are you talking about? He said, man, I'm looking at your eyes. And he was like, you know, because he said, because I'm an iridologist also. And I don't know what the iridologist, you're irritating me right now. <laughs> you know, it's like, yeah, I just gave you the jewel. You're telling me I'm dumb. So are, are filthy. And he's like, yeah, but, but he said, you're a vegetarian, right? And I said, yeah. But he said, but you're a junk food vegetarian. You eat croissants, huh? And I was like, yeah, you know. He's like, you eat french fries, huh? He's like, yeah, you're a junk food vegetarian. So you're not clean. So all of what you're saying is amazing, but I'm going to show you what you're really about once we clean all of that out. And then talk to me. And we went on this quest. It was like yin and yang with me and him as far as we made it perfectly with what he needed. He was like, you know, this guy was wild. So he had known every single thing about the body, but he was already like 70. He was ready to go. He fixed Osho when Osho was sick. He fixed Manly P. Hall when Manly P. Hall was bloated and had all of the, died, died that day. They were stale. They called in to try to get him back. He was a holistic doctor. 20 years ago on Mount Shasta, you know, just drilling into me all the time about the bullshit. 
Let me dial it in. Let me dial it in. Just all the bullshit that goes on in these communities. But anyway, in that process of what he taught me, which I taught everybody else through this process about the importance of how to keep your body clean, that's when I started making the levels of acceleration that matched and paired with the knowledge that I had just received from the awakening of Kundalini. So it wasn't just any one thing. It's a formula. It's a process. The real invisible university or invisible college, as they sometimes call it. So now the rebuilding had to take place, just like the Shiva character is great at destruction, but only because it's great also at regeneration. Okay, so I had to rebuild everything. I rebuild a whole new life. And that's what I did. And I started off with a gesture of kindness and love by giving away what was most valuable to me. And you know that story. And it kept going. I just want you to see the process. Now we're at the advent. It's been a decade. I spent to the tune of about 14 hours a day for 90% of that time working with people working with other celestial beings, working with this platform, these technologies, all trying to, uni uni trying to unify all those forces so they come to see the awareness and the power that we truly have together. And I also come personally into the fulfillment of the creation of this projection. So that's the rebuilding process because I didn't go try to get rent of cars again and, and Ferraris and go to Mannheim and, and get auctions and you know pay 100,000 and run it back through the auction after making two or 300,000 for the same price I buy. I didn't go back into all of that. I went into something different, a strange world with strange people. <laughs> and here we are together, loving each other, tribe.